Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna talk you guys through one of my lower body workout sessions based off the training program I'm following right now and how I train on a day in which I haven't had the best sleep quality and also I'm recovering from a 10K run yesterday. So if I pull up my activity from yesterday, and again, I'll send this through to Andy to pull up on screen as well. Um, as you guys can see from my activity yesterday, I did a 10K run, which is pretty fast pace. So 419 was my average kilometer pace. So I did it in 43 minutes, which is pretty good. So my legs are feeling a little bit heavy from that, I'll be honest. Um, but then also my seat metrics aren't particularly great from last night. So my readiness is pretty high, which is good. Um, my seat metrics aren't particularly great. So today I'm gonna also regulate my training session and essentially just see how I feel throughout the session rather than pushing it too much. If my readiness is anything below 70 or 75, I often just auto-regulate my session. I don't necessarily follow my percentage-based work. So for example, I'm not hitting a back squat at 140 kilos today. I'll be obviously working at a lighter load. And just regulate the intensity throughout. So in terms of sets and reps and obviously the volume I'm accumulating throughout the session to see how I'm feeling. Uh, at the moment, I'm also competing the 75 day hard challenge, as you guys know, with all my friends as well. So yeah, in terms of training intensity, obviously workouts are pretty frequent. <laughs> um, like yesterday, for example, at 10K run, that was a pretty high intensity. The last kilometer was in four minutes, so it was pretty fast. So I am pretty tired today, but I don't want to tax my central nervous system too much. So yeah, today's session is obviously a low body session. I'll start with some mobility work and obviously I'll get Andy to film that as well. So obviously got the foam roller here. I'll make sure I show you guys how to open up my hips a little bit more, my hip flexors in particular. Obviously working at a desk all day, both standing and obviously sitting. My hip flex get a little bit tight, my lower back gets a little bit tight as well. So I'll talk you guys through that, then through a low body session in terms of training cues and then obviously wrap up the video. In terms of mobility work, um, I do tend to see a little bit of mobility work for every training session, of course, just to make sure that my lower back is not particularly tight and obviously my hip flex are pretty loose as well. So just some classic foam rolling really, just to make sure that, again, my lumbar spine isn't particularly tight. I'll do some rotations as well. Uh, nothing too complex, pretty simple work. Just do a couple just to show you guys some examples. So arms across the chest here, which is getting all up to my traps, but not my leg. And a couple of rotations as well, just to get nice and loose. Um, and then from here, just make sure I'm in a nice neutral position with my torso. Again, extending through the lats here, just to make sure that I'm relieving any tension, getting some rotation work in just prior to my working sets, prior to going into any warm-up work as well, like so. So again, my arm's fully extended here, just rotating through with the right arm to get my lap nice and extended, nice and warmed. Again, that repeat the same with the side as well. So at the moment, my lower back's a little bit tight, um, based on all the running work I'm doing, and based on the fact that my hamstrings and glutes are quite tight as well, because obviously, again, getting in considerable miles every week does tighten up your hamstrings and your glutes, no matter how much mobility you're doing. So this work's really important to me as well. Um, fortunately enough, my mobility overall is pretty good. Um, so like here, for example, a good test mobility would be sitting in the squat position and then from there, put one arm flat on the floor, rotating up. So yeah, fortunately enough, my mobility is okay, uh, which is good. But obviously it's really important to be incorporating prior to your working sets and prior to your warm-up sets. Just even sitting in a squat position like this is really, really important to get sure, make sure the hip flexors are nice and open as well you can actually start loading efficiently through the hips rather than obviously then putting tension towards the lower back as well. So mobility work like this is really, really important. Get your heart rate up a little bit prior to sessions as well today. Uh, fortunately enough, it's sunny weather, it's nice and warm in here. So yeah, my heart rate will get up quite a lot during today's workout, which is cool. Um, and simply just flush out, because I'm, I'm pretty fatigued from that run yesterday, I'll be honest, and from the poor night of sleep. But um, getting in today's session would be cool. Just get it auto-regulated, get some blood flowing, get it pumping, get the heart rate up a little bit more. And then from there, if you guys got really tight hip flexors, you can get a mobility ball uh, and also place it on your hip flexors here. So I think I've actually got a kettlebell in here. All right, so, yeah. so I didn't have a mobility ball, ball in this apartment, so what I'm using is just a kettlebell. Um, so my right hip flex is a little bit tight. Again, probably based off the running work I did yesterday. So all I would do, just to open up my hip flexor, rather than going to a static lunge, which isn't particularly great when it comes to opening up your hips, it probably causes a little bit more tension than anything else, is I'll actually lie on the kettlebell on my hip. So if I were to show you where it is on my left hip, it'd be more towards here. And I simply find a spot in which I feel a lot of tension. So again, I found that just below the hip bone, below the pelvis essentially, and I can feel a little bit of tension there. So I'll hold that for about 30 seconds, get it nice and loose. Again, get some blood flow through it, of course, just relieve that tension. Then I rotate here, a little bit more of a hip rotation. Again, I can feel a lot of tension in this area, and obviously I'll show it on my left side as well, so it's probably better for camera. So I'll place it on the hip here, as so. Lie into the movement, and I'll just wiggle around until I find a good, good point of tension. So I've got that, so I'll hold that for about 10 to 20 seconds. And then once that's done, 
I'll then start rotating through more towards with my hip again, so here, as you guys can see, and it's pretty painful, <laughs> I'll be honest, but it opens up the hips really nicely for obviously my back squats I'm performing next. Um, and then I'll go into a few more upsets after I've done this, so I'll start working with the bar and then I'll obviously add some load onto there um, after I've done my mobility work. And um, then go into a few working sets, so three to four working sets today, and then do a couple of hip hinge movements as well. Um, obviously the equipment I'm, I'm limited to right now isn't huge, so I've got the barbell, I've got obviously about 120 kilos worth of weight, which is pretty good, some, uh, some dumbbells as well for some dumbbell lunges upstairs on the roof, but nothing too heavy. So my first movement today is going to be a back squat, um, obviously pretty standard compound movement, most of you guys will be hitting it if you're training in the gym anyway. Um, but for today I'll be working up to about 120 kilos worth of loads, just for four, four working sets, three, four working sets, probably about four to six reps, nothing too taxing. I'll probably keep every um, set in today's session at around RP seven to eight. As I said, my recovery hasn't been great from last night's sleep and also as a result of doing that 10K yesterday as well. So today it's just a case of getting in some movement. I've actually got a few more uh, training sessions and runs program for this week as well so it would be too taxed for them either because doing a 10k 15k even up to half marathon with tired legs sucks um so it won't be going particularly heavy today but yeah i'll do three to four warm-up sets with just the bar first and i'll stick on 60 kilos then work up to 100 kilos then stack on about 120 kilos four working sets about six to eight reps and i'll talk to you in the movement as i go through it as well so in terms of cues for the movement also i'll start with just the bar um most individuals that i work with are pretty well aware of what they're doing in terms of training but i'll just talk you guys through it as obviously viewers as well. Um, hand placement, roughly around shoulder width on the bar. So for me personally, it's on the grip here, as you guys can see. So I'll place it here. In terms of bar placement, again, obviously more towards the traps, but as you guys will notice, as I enter the bar here, I'm pulling down on the bar and keeping my lats nice and engaged, my wrists nice and straight as well, meaning that when I'm moving with the bar, I'm moving the bar rather than the bar moving me. Okay, which is really important when I start adding load onto the bar. I'll then take two steps out, so on my left foot, on my right foot, get myself positioned about shoulder width wide, keep my chest upright, head nice and neutral, facing forward, again, lats nice and engaged, deep breath, open up the hips, and then into a squat position. So I'm just going to hold that for the sake of just showing you where I'll be squatting to. Again, my tension is primarily loading through my heels, and my back's nice and neutral, my chest upright as well, head neutral, drive through. So I'll do about 10 12 reps of these. Let's get some blood flow, nice and mobile. Well, that's a really good example of good form for squatting. As you guys can see, again, opening up through my hips. Obviously, really good depth here, which is important, of course, for a squat. And again, nice and controlled load as well. So from a perspective of gaining as much muscle tissue as possible, back squats might not necessarily be the most ideal movement. I'd preferably work with a hack squat or a leg press. Um, particularly when it comes to recovery from training and obviously make sure that my lower back's not particularly tight as well but at the moment in terms of equipment I have access to the back squat's going to do a job really well. Um, in a more of a commercial gym environment yeah hack squat would be great or a leg press but for now as I said back squat's really good compound movement so this is my primary movement in my current training rotation obviously looking to increase my loads here and my percentages as well. Um, this is my main compound movement I'm focusing on right now and then other than that doing a couple of hip hinge movements as well like a stiff leg deadlift um, but yeah, just getting through the sessions right now until the gyms open up on April 12th, which is pretty soon, which would be cool. Um, but yeah, other than that, training is going good. Recovering well, which is awesome. Um, in the main, um, my 10K time is going down, which is good, great. So yeah, my average, so my time yesterday was 43 minutes for 10K. So I was really, really happy with that. I'm looking to do half marathon under an hour and a half. So that'd be my PB. Um, I reckon I've got it in the tank, feeling pretty good, recovering pretty well. I haven't got any difficulty with shin splints at the moment either, which is great. Um, definitely did about two months ago um, but I think that's in, in Maine because of the shoe I was wearing um, so I had the Nike, Nike Vaporfly Max I believe it was um, you guys have seen it in the previous video the orange shoe um, they've, they've got a carbon sole in um, which definitely feels pretty comfortable first but in terms of my contact point when I was actually running I noticed because the sole was so thick I started striking with my heel rather than my midfoot and as a result of that I started to get shin splints pretty quickly um, whereas right now I'm using the, the Swakoni and Dolphin Speed shoes um, and as a result the padding and the cushioning isn't so thick and therefore my striking point in my foot is much more towards my midfoot. As a result I'm not getting any shin splints which is awesome. So I've been working a lot on my contact point with the floor when I've been running to make sure that I'm recovering well from my training because shin splints are the worst thing, they're very hard to recover from as well. Um, so I've been working on that a lot, working on actually strengthening up my posterior chains, so my glutes, my hamstrings, obviously my calves as well when running. Just make sure I can cover it from that, but yeah, I'm going to get a half marathon in under an hour and a half, I reckon. 
Um, preferably prior to getting too hot here in the UK in the summer, um, so that'd be interesting to see, but I'd love to get an under three hour marathon. Um, I reckon I've got that. Did a half marathon with my friend Connor most recently. Um, we did it in one hour 34, which is pretty quick. Um, but it felt pretty easy. Um, we were recovering really well from it as well, so that was good. Um, just make sure that I'm utilizing my nutrition correctly as well, and obviously make sure I'm utilizing things like electrolyte gels as well throughout the training session or throughout the marathon, which we didn't do. In that last half marathon, we just went with water. Um, so that was a bit, of a bit of a risk, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what we can get with that. Again, three hour marathon would be like an awesome PB, but in the meantime, make sure I'm obviously hitting enough strength work to be progressive for my running work as well, of course. Um, and yeah, this is the priority for today's session. So yeah, so this again, second warm up set. So we've got 60 kilos on the bar. Again, it's making sure that my hips feel nice and loose, that my lower back feels nice and, nice and okay, really. Uh, not too much tension. And then from there, obviously start loading up to 100 kilos and then 120 kilos eventually. But yeah, second warm up set. One of the key things to be aware of as well when doing a back squat that most people tend to get wrong when they're particularly when they're starting out is just their breathing and I'll talk to you the cues for that as well but most people don't know how to load through the diaphragm correctly when squatting and as a result of that a lot of the tension from the weight on the bar is going towards their lower back um, and as a result when they do squat Rather than exerting force directly upright, they're exerting force either backward or forward and then upright. So it's not particularly efficient, at uh, least for a lot of injuries, um, which in the main is why a lot of individuals tend to ignore programming back squats into their programming, simply because they're probably not particularly great at the movement. So I'll talk you through the, the biomechanics of it. I've already talked to you through about the fact that obviously hip hinging is really important with this movement. Make sure you're loading through the hips and the posterior chain. Um, and then obviously make sure the head's nice and neutral, chest upright. But in terms of breathing through the diaphragm, really, really important variable here. Um, obviously, the, the same principle applies to most compound movements, but particularly with the back squat, because the, term, the, the most compact part of your torso should obviously be the, the core area here, particularly when squatting. So again, if you think about it, you've got a lot of weight on your back. Obviously, you're, you're driving up from your feet upwards. This is the midsection here, and that's going to take the, the bulk of the load. Okay? And that could be the point in which your torso essentially not necessarily breaks, but from there, the most tension isn't loaded efficiently. So what I'm gonna be thinking about is when I'm under the bar, nice deep breath into the diaphragm, not into the chest, into the diaphragm to push my core out. So here, hold it for a second or so. Squat, upright, exhale, out, then back in again, and every rep. So I'll be performing sets of six with this weight here. Again, it's my last warm up set. Um, and you guys will see that throughout. All set, it's also nice and neutral. Deep breath in. Um, yeah, that's how you breathe correctly and load your diaphragm properly when performing a back squat. Really, really important. Otherwise, if I'm not loading my core correctly, again, as you guys would have seen, I'll probably start to tilt a little bit forward with the weight. As a result, rather than loading correctly like this, from this position going directly upright, probably going here, pushing my glutes up, leaning forward, and then up. And as a result, engaging my lower back much more so. Um, not necessarily in a positive manner, <laughs> more so from a perspective of probably getting an injury potentially disc related obviously in terms of your lumbar spine that's pretty sensitive as an area as well so protecting it is really really important and that's where breathing comes in as a massive massive key point here with back squatting okay so make sure you guys bear that in mind when you are next in the gym or when you're next in your home gym as well cool so that's my back uh, back squats done my working set so now moving into a stiff leg deadlift obviously my first hip hinge movement of today um, again just make sure that i'm really prioritizing form and make sure my hamstrings are nice and firing um, obviously make sure that the hip hinge itself is uh, fairly decent as well in terms of range of motion rather than injuring my lower back so it's really really important to me in terms of training cues for this movement pretty simple truth be told um, foot stance again just within shoulder width obviously hand position again i'm just going to go on the rings here so about shoulder width wide and what i'm really focusing on this movement is keeping my torso totally neutral so essentially from the base of my spine all the way up to the top of my head neutral in a, in a stick position as such like i've got a pole on my back and from here opening up the hips bar down towards the mid shin. And again, you can see my back's totally flat and neutral and then driving up through the glutes. 
if you compromise that position and your neck starts to raise or your, your chin starts to drop, so here for example, if I go like this, start to lift up my chin, immediately I'm compromising my back. And as a result of that, a lot of tension goes towards my lower back and not actually towards my hamstrings and my glutes, which I'm trying to engage with this movement as well. So that's a really, really important cue. And you'll notice throughout every rep of every set I hit here, which would be about three or four sets, I'm just keeping my torso nice and neutral. What I'm doing is pushing the load through my hips and again, make sure my hamstrings are firing really well, okay? Again, nothing like this, nothing where I'm just lifting my chin up and compromising my back. That's a really, really poor move. So again, you'll see this with my working sets. I'm just going for sets of 10 to 12 on these. About 80 kilos on the bar, so nothing particularly heavy, but again, just make sure I'm getting my movement in for today. So nice and easy. Nice simple movement. Another key key for this is making sure I'm applying all low through my heels rather than allowing it to go towards my forefront of my foot. So again here to make sure I'm actually engaging my posterior chain so my hammies and my glutes, all the weight is placed on my heel throughout the whole rep, the whole range of motion as well. So here, again, all through the hip hinge, down towards my mid chins, all contact in the heels, boom, through in the heels again. That's a really good cue to help you engage your posterior chain. Otherwise you'll notice a little bit of engagement from your quads and that's not what we're trying to achieve with this movement. So really simple key, but really, really important at the same time. Okay, so it's a lovely sunny day. So I'm hitting my third movement up here on the roof. Um, pretty lucky to have this view and obviously the natural sunlight up here is pretty amazing. So just going walking lunges, just gonna do strides of 10 up and 10 back trying to avoid dog poop because we do have puppies up here unfortunately um just trying to avoid that but 10 up 10 back um not not particularly complicated in terms of biomechanics of this movement truth be told um in terms of stride length pretty average stride length to be honest just around this range range here make sure i'm not making contact with my um, opposite knee on the floor so for example my left knee not hitting the floor here again driving all my weight through the heel make sure my chest is upright throughout head facing forward otherwise i'm not engaging my glutes and my hamstrings as much as i would like to be as you guys can see, or you can see, I'm pretty quad dominant. <laughs> um, so my point of focus with the majority of my lower body movements is to make sure I'm engaging my posterior chain a lot rather than my quad so much. Um, it's more of a genetic thing and just from my cross country running as a kid, um, being quad dominant. But yeah, this movement in particular, it just means I have to really focus on applying all tension through the heel, make sure I'm really engaging my, my glutes and my quads, uh, sorry, my glutes and my hamstrings, and really driving through full range and make sure I get that contraction. So you guys will see what I mean here. Chest upright, head nice and neutral, really, really important training cues here. So 10 there, 10 back, three sets, about 20 reps in total, so 10 on each leg. Slight misstep there, did make contact with my knee, but other than that, pretty good set. Two more working sets of these, and I'll go back downstairs for another hamstring isolation and a bit of cool work to wrap up. And that's today's session wrapped up, really. Okay, so those are my three primary leg movements for today's session. I'm under a little bit of a crunch for time, but I'm about 40 minutes in. So my last movement of today will be a hanging leg raise. So I'm just gonna go three to four working sets of these movements as well. Make sure that I'm really nailing my form here, very, very strict in terms of maintenance of that rather than swinging throughout the movement to make sure I'm actually engaging my abdominals rather than swinging through and engaging my hip flexors. Um, both from a perspective of longevity in terms of my lower body training and obviously my running training, but also from a perspective of actually engaging the muscle I'm trying to engage rather than it being a case of just getting the movement done for the amount of reps I want to achieve rather than the end benefit of it per se. Um, so yeah, three to four working sets of these, pretty simple movement to be honest. Again, to make sure you're breathing through your diaphragm throughout the movement, so nice big inhale and exhale throughout the range. Uh, I'll demonstrate here, so nice neutral position with the shoulders, legs straight, up, full extension, same again. There. So three or four working sets, 10 to 12 reps of these. Nice, just a one minute rest period in between. And that'll be today's lower body session. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's training session. Um, it'd be interesting to see how you guys uh, respond to the walkthrough of my training session. If you guys want more content like this, please do let me know, of course, because the majority of content is primarily sit down and talk to the camera, but 
if you guys want more walkthrough content like this, like my workout with Tyler, for example, as well, let me know. Obviously for more stuff like this, like a push session, pull session, even my running workouts as well with Andy behind the camera as well. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, of course, and drop your comments down below for any questions you have or any future content you guys want to see. Awesome.